HPV is by far the most common sexually transmitted infection in the U.S., but the vaccine to prevent the virus is hotly debated. The CDC says all children should get it, and you may get a flyer, even a call from your school about it. North Carolina News investigates Jonathan Rodriguez has a story. Jonathan. Well, Sean Sharon, it all comes down to risk versus benefits. Doctors say the vaccine can prevent cancer, but some parents say it made their children incredibly sick. And why are schools involved? Take a look. We're talking about a real ability to prevent cancers. I was a little bit appalled and taken back. This information is provided to all parents and guardians of students in 5th through 12th grade. Why this is a school issue. There's just constant, constant pain. I started reading these stories about girls dying from it, and I was really scared. This topic has become highly politically charged. Don't just jump and get the vaccine because you're getting something from the school district. It's infected nearly 80 million people in the U.S., and 14 million more contract the sexually transmitted disease every year. Human papillomavirus is one of the most common infections that we have in the United States. Dr. Tamara Coyne-Beasley works at the pediatrics department at UNC Hospital. This virus actually causes cancers. The FDA approved the HPV vaccine in 2006. Now the CDC recommends it for 11 and 12-year-old girls and boys. The reason why we do it at 11 and 12 is because we want to do it before a person is sexually active. I feel like it's a better situation when you can say that I can take this shot and be guarded against a lot of other things. All right, and just relax, sweetie. Today, Chandra Harrelson is bringing in her daughter for the shot. I've just recently lost my mother. She lost her battle with cancer, so to know that this is something that could almost prevent that or aid the process to prevent it, of course, I'm for it. Dr. Coyne Beasley says it's also more effective in younger children. I actually made a decision to give it to my daughter at age nine. But not everyone is in support. I was prepared to have a disabled child for life. Rosemary Mathis is quick to tell you she's not against vaccines. Her daughter Lauren got the HPV prevention shots in eighth grade, a decision she now regrets. Each time she got a dose, she became sick, but the third dose disabled her completely. She couldn't go to school. She couldn't do anything. And it was followed by pretty intense headaches and dizziness and a lot of nausea and very, very severe stomach pain. That was probably the worst. After hearing similar stories online, Rosemary believes the problems were caused by the vaccine, but her local doctors weren't convinced. My pediatrician said, I won't believe it until I hear it from Duke University Hospital. So I said, okay, make me a appointment. And I went to Duke and they said it was vaccine injury. Being in pain all the time, it was just really tough as, you know, an 11 year old. Are there risks? I, the risks are really, really minimal. The rate of you know, any serious event is, is really incredibly low, less than 1%. We didn't talk about Lauren's specific case, but Dr. Coyne Beasley says in the past 10 years, nearly 2 million people in our state have successfully gotten the vaccine. And not only do we know that it has high effectiveness, we've already seen the rates of cervical cancer going down. But there's another concern. Hello, this is Kelly Creech, Director of Health Services for the Wake County Public School System. When I got the call, I was um, a little taken aback as to why the school would be calling um, about a vaccine such as this. Susan Napolitano was quite upset when she got this robocall from Wake County Schools about the HPV vaccine. When you send a form home that says, get vaccinated in big, bold letters, I think they're making a statement. When they follow it up with phone calls, you know, to confirm that you got the form and that you should be considering this vaccination, yes, I think they're trying to push the vaccination as opposed to just providing information. I don't think the school should have the right to push vaccines on parents. Through our research, we found it's actually state law for schools to provide information to parents about HPV. I had no idea that was the state law. I think that needs to be revisited. But it doesn't specifically mention making phone calls. So we asked Wake County Schools why they do it. Why was that decision made? So sending the information via robocall is the most cost-effective way for us to send it out. If we were to send it out via flyer, it would cost upwards of $10,000. Call or no call, the vaccine is not mandatory. So at this point, it's up to parents to decide. I have a conversation with your physician. I, you know, hesitate to have people just go and do their own independent research because there's so much misinformation on the web. Do I really want to take the chance when I get that vaccine? They should have a choice, you know, not have that pushed on them.
Now, Mathis has helped set up a website that documents dozens of stories like her daughter's. Dr. Coyne Beasley recommends that parents just get their information from the CDC. We have both of those links on our website. But is the CDC keeping track of cases like this? They do. So there's a program called VAERS that anybody can actually go and enter an adverse event that they think was caused by a vaccine. The problem is that one's hotly debated, too, on how accurate it is. But we also have links to that on our website as well. Just check, click on Investigates. All right, Jonathan Rodriguez reporting. Jonathan, thank you.